Preaching the old long time pastor here. No. How can you want to say? He said you brought him here to hear When we come down here a long it's the only other well, I was here for an association meeting a long time ago. And I just barely found the church thanks to the directions of Helen Reed. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm I'm happy to be with you this afternoon and uh, uh, take part in the service, and I guess we've got to speak really loud, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> really loud. Deacon David reminds me of that every Sunday. <laughs> and we have a microphone, so uh, he'll, he'll give me the this, or he'll just tell me, Pastor, you got to speak up. <laughs> so we're thankful for the invitation. We're thankful for the meeting. And uh, if more churches, if more people were involved in God's work, Instead of the foolishness of the world, Amen. the house would be filled. Amen. Amen. Right? Um, life would be altogether better, right? Amen. Right? But it takes what? It takes the God. You got to have the Father, you got to have the Son. And I'll tell mm -hmm. you what, now I, I, I have the privilege of preaching about God's power. Amen. How things get done. Amen. God has a will to get things done. He has a Son that has accomplished His work and has made the sacrifice and has become the living word of God from the, before the foundation of the world. He exhibited it to us. And God sent something else into this world that has never been here before. The Holy Spirit. That's right. Now he'd come in little portions, right? right. He'd be distributed to prophets and saints and all the old... If you read Hebrews 11, all of these people that had worked for God and did things for God were moved by the Spirit to go and do. Right? right? Mm -hmm. Now being me being an electrician, I can understand getting shocked and wanting to get off the wire. You know, you move quickly <laughs> when you're when the power's applied, you move quickly. And that's what God does. He uses the Holy Spirit as a, a means of power. And not only that, but a great teacher, a guide, yeah. uh, someone to really explain the character of God to us. And uh, the thing that I marvel about all the most, I don't know why people will not come to the love of God. Right. They search for, you know, they had that old country western looking for love in all the wrong places. How true that is of them. Amen. The love they long, the, the rest for their soul is right here in this book. Amen. And I just wish they would come and hear it. Yep. And it's our job to kind of find them out and take them and, yes. and take the best we can to them. But it's still their choice to come. So let me read my text. You know, I actually did not have a copy of the program at home. I could not. I don't know what went on. But anyway, so I, I, I made myself up. I had enough. I said, well, I'm, I'm in charge of the Holy Spirit today, or my topic would be that. But anyway, the second verse that I had down on my notes here is my text. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Now, now, see, I'm talking about Holy Spirit leading you into what you need to do. Well, I didn't have that text there, but I, it's on my paper. So I'm happy that God gave me that this morning, or this afternoon. If you would turn with me, I'd like to uh, start this uh, with, uh, I'll probably read both of these. Uh, i got John 4, 21 through 24. And uh, Brother Aaron read a little bit of this, I think. No, maybe not. No, the other one way down the page. He says here, Jesus saith unto her, and this is the woman at the well, mm -hmm. will believe me, the hour come of me shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when true worship, true worshipers, shall worship the Father in what? Spirit mm -hmm. and truth. truth. That's the only way that you can satisfy the righteous God. Amen. That's the only means that He has approved for you to approach Him. For all of us. 
And it says here, God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in what? Spirit and, and truth. And our text is John 14, just a few chapters over, 15 through 17. Jesus speaking again, He says, If you love Me, keep My commandments, and I will pray the Father that He will, shall give you another Comforter, that He may abide with you forever. Mm -hmm. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth Him not, neither knoweth Him. But ye know Him, for He dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Mm -hmm. I like that God has made it this way. Amen. I need constant care to keep me right. Because mm -hmm. there isn't a moment goes by when Satan will say, Joe, you got a minute? You got a second? Let me talk to you about something. You really like it. Yeah, but there's that greater is he that is in me, in, within me than he that is in the world. Amen. I have to use that a lot because, uh, you know, he likes to come and, and get into your life. But let's go to the Lord in prayer before we continue. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank Thee, Lord, for this beautiful day. Father, we thank Thee for Jesus, our Savior. We thank Thee for Thou art God and there is no other. And we thank Thee, Heavenly Father, that Thou has uh, given us a great comforter, Father, in all of our troubles and trials and tribulations. But in, not only in that, Heavenly Father, that we might rejoice ever, er, evermore and exceedingly be glad, Heavenly Father, of the, the promises that are set before us, Father. Bless this day, Heavenly Father, for thy glory. Mm -hmm. May we preach, Heavenly Father, for thy, for thy truth this day. And may we, Heavenly Father, preach that those that are out without the ark of safety, Heavenly Father, might hear a good word of thee, that they might be, Heavenly Father, drawn closer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Um, I want to kind of explain here how, uh, and uh, this, this scripture does point to how we're getting the Holy Spirit. And uh, there's a, another scripture that I wanted to read over in First John. It says, uh, John, First John five and seven says, "For there are three that bear record, you know, in heaven: the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost." Mm -hmm. And it says, "And these three are one." So that's where we get Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, which certainly we have tonight before us. That's where they come for. And also, in John 3 and 34, it says Jesus was given the Spirit, but not by measure. And I often thought about that, what it would be like to have the Spirit without measure. You know, we're given the earth of the Spirit. We're given a little bit of down payment inside of us. Mm -hmm. Because I, I still am tempted and drawn away and, and don't listen sometimes and disobedient. <clears throat> uh, but I have, of course, an advocate with the Father to take care of that. Mm -hmm. But to have the Spirit without with not a measure there. I mean to tell you, it, someday, mm -hmm. someday, we're going to get there. Right. To the point where we won't have to be... I heard one preacher say, he says, I'll, I'll be so happy in heaven. He says, when I, when I wake up, and he's just kind of maybe making a little analogy that we're going to say, because we don't really know if we're going to have to get up in the morning up in heaven. <laughs> but he said, when I get up in heaven, he said, I'll, I'll be able to get up and I'll say, well, I'm going to go do this. And then after I'm done with that, I'm going to go over here and do that. And he says, you know what? Every single choice I make for the day will, will be perfect right. because I'll be in God's will. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine living a day like that? Mm -hmm. No temptation, no trial. And uh, that's living inside. But right now, we rely on this Holy Spirit for a lot of things in this life. Uh, but let me, let me start this way. Jesus spoke about being the light of the world, right? The I am the light of the world. And then uh, he said, and, and then as long as I am in the world, I am the light. As long as he is in the world, he's the light of the world. And then he said, now in, in, in the Beatitudes, in Matthew chapter 5, there he talks about, ye are the light of the world. Right. <laughs> now, I think it a very dangerous thing to give me God's flashlight. I just want to use that as an because I don't know where I'll be poking that thing. And I, I made a point of this. God has not left His righteousness in the hands of man without having a way to safeguard the truth. How's He do it? 
the Holy Spirit. That's the safeguard. We can never overrule the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now we can, but we'll be guilty of sin yes. mm -hmm. or wrongdoing. Mm -hmm. We can, and God has protected it that way. So we have a way that we can actually be use God's Spirit in the right way that He intends it to be used. How? Grace and love and mercy towards those that are without. Amen. To help them come into, into seeing God's love for their soul mm -hmm. that they might be saved. Now, uh, in Acts 1.1, we trace where this Holy Spirit comes into this earth. Day of Pentecost, right? right? And I mean, it is a wonderful day. I mean, the day that that Spirit came down upon them and the Comforter was given, I, I always refer to that as the empowering of the church. Where now, uh, you know, the, the, the car is built, it's been at the dealership, it's all prepped, they've filled it up for fuel, and you're going to get in and turn the key and go somewhere. <laughs> and the church surely did take off that day. We can see also just down below that there, you're going to find that uh, Peter, uh, he, he gave out that sermon to those that had crucified Christ. And uh, repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for remissions of sins, that ye shall receive the gift of the what? The Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that was what we needed. You see... I am so. I told you as I started. I'm so glad that God fixed it. That He has something inside of us to keep us uh, mindful Amen. of Him. Amen. Uh, I can tell you of many times where I just uh, maybe said thank you, Lord, for no reason. You know, just because I said I felt something in me that I had to say that. You know, and uh, I've. Uh, I enjoy the moments when God will commune with you when you least expect it. You're out doing some work and you're just dripping and uh, you'll have a peaceful moment there. Now, it never happens after I bang my thumb or nothing, but soon afterwards it does come. But I, I, I'm just so thankful that God has indwelled us with this being called the Holy Spirit. And it's such a pleasure to have someone, you know, that is our advocate with the Father through the Spirit, right? He makes those groanings and utterings that we can't understand it to pass along of the things that we need. And that Holy Spirit also, it says here, who has also sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit within our hearts. That little earnest, oh, is it precious. Right. It, it's a... Uh, <clears throat> It's a relief for the ills of this life here in this sin-cursed world. It truly is. It can make you happy and uh, at least comfortable in irritable moments. People who revile you, people picking on you or something like that. You can always say, thank you, Lord. Help them. Need help. Help them, Lord. In Romans 8, I'd like to read over there a little bit about uh, how the Spirit is guiding us away from living after the flesh. <laughs> Romans 8, 13-17. It says here, For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. And I was living that way one time. And uh, I did want to say what Deacon David said, that you know I was happy that day that you know, actually, Jesus came by, but he's in the person of the Holy Spirit <laughs> at church up home there. And I, I said, I, I, I said, I, I told the wife, and she denies hearing it. But I said, I, I've got to go. And uh, for the for the past few weeks, I had had that death grip, you know, on the railing yes. up there. You know, when you're singing away and you getting anxious, and finally, I looked at her and I said, I've got to go. And I went up and made my profession of faith. Amen. And I was so, I felt so unburdened. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Right after I finished. And that day, 
I'm telling you, if that's as close to living as a spirit as I've ever felt in my life. Right. Carefree. Not a worry in life. Nothing to bother you. We was going to eat over at Mabel's, and that's always a good meal, and it's just as happy as could be. I, we could have ate dirt and, and uh, clovers or something, and I'd have been just thrilled <laughs> with it. And uh, that day is kind of etched up there. I, I don't know the date, but the memory of that day right. is there. Yeah. And I, I expect, I hope to keep that till I go home. But I, it says here, we're walking in this spirit. Oh, where did I leave off at? I got a little bit lost, 13. For if you lived after the flesh, you shall die. But if you do the spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many as led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen. So, it's a proof also. Do you have that spirit within you? Do you know you have it? Well, if you've made a profession of faith, you do. Yes. yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. You have to know. I, I believe that God says from the abundance of the house, the moral speakers, can a man tell a lie for salvation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it's, it, you have to be truthful with God to be saved. Mm -hmm. You can't approach Him in an untruth and, and expect to be saved. Amen. For as men are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Father, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children and heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if it so be that we suffered with Him, that we may also be glorified together. That spirit assures us that we are doing the right things in life. Right, right. Amen. You know, I find in the Bible it says this: there's no uh, limitation on doing good. Mm -hmm. Amen. There's no limitation on what you can do in good works. You can do them all day long, all night long. You can wear yourself out with them. But if you don't have this spirit dwelling within you, it's all for naught. Amen. Amen. First works first. Be saved. And in Galatians chapter 5, and it was so strange, that was 13 through 17, and, and in Galatians it's 5, 13 through 17. Which, I don't know, that's just the way a sermon works sometimes. Galatians 5, 13 says this, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty, only not you... Only use not liberty for an occasion of the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But it says here, if ye bite and devour one another, and take heed that ye be not consumed one another. Consumed one of another. This I say then, walk, walk in the Spirit, which will keep us from fighting amongst ourselves. Mm -hmm. Right? If we walk in the That's Spirit, we, we won't have too many of these battles. <laughs> I've often thought that many a battle could be solved by whoever has the problem. Both of, or both of you or all of you just get down, humbly get together, say we're going to, everybody here, gather together, we're going to hang on to each other, we're going to kneel down, we're going to pray about this, and then we're going to talk about it, we're going to talk about it, and talk about it, talk about it and then we're going to pray some more until we can find a resolution to what we've got the problem with. And I believe that with God's Holy Spirit, there's not a thing that we can't resolve. Amen. Right? The truth. Yeah. It takes, uh, some people might have to look a little different, some people might have to give up something, you know, that they, they thought was right or this or that, but all these issues can be resolved. God's not the author of confusion. That's right. Mm -hmm. He is not the author of this confusion. We bring this on by ourselves. We bring the problems into the church God doesn't. We bring them in. So we can walk in this spirit and be successful at it. And that's, I think that we've given up on that a lot, being successful in, in the Holy Spirit. Just being outright bold for the Holy Spirit in this life. Uh, a lot of it has died away. 
Now, I, I, I know the battleground's getting a little fierce out there. But you know what that means. They need us all the more. Mm -hmm. God needs us all the more to get, you know, well, I'm gonna, I, I have to do a little more for the Lord than I have been. And it's not that we ourselves are going to have to do it. If we would be willing, God will go with us. With the Holy, he'll send that Holy Spirit and help us do the work that needs to be done. So if we walk in this truth, we'll have a very, very fruitful life. Amen. If we stay away from the Spirit and just leave it lay, we'll not bear much. We won't bear much at all. This Holy Spirit that if God has given us and He's used it as our safeguard, our, our connection to Him, and I often thought of all the power in the world, uh, you know, the power that God has. You know, uh, it, it says there in the, in the Genesis there how God made the, started the creation. You know, and the Spirit actually does the work. It does all the work. Mm -hmm. So, if He gives us access to that Spirit, what can we accomplish Amen. for Him? Amen. Right? We have access to the greatest power known to man to, to achieve... Not uh, peace in the Middle East or uh, a trade agreement, but the salvation of men's souls. Yeah, That's what the battle's about. It is. It's not about economics or territories or you know certain issues, tariffs and such, all the economic issues and such and going on and this and that. No, it's for the salvation of souls that we want to fight for. We want to be diligent in that. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says we should walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Now, I'm thankful that the Holy Spirit is invisible. And I'm thankful that I can't see God and I can't see Jesus. Because I find in the Bible the things that are unseen are eternal. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. things that I do see, those are all temporal. Yeah. That's right. Amen. And I'm looking at my body here and yes, yeah, someday... I'm going to be back in the dirt. <laughs> right? But the things I can't see, the triune God, as He has displayed Himself before us in His Word, I will see Him then. Face to face, heart to heart, and all the past will be forgotten. Yes. So why don't we use that Holy Spirit to do a little more for God? 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Know ye not that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Reminding us. So many times in life, have you ever, have you ever thought about that as you're walking down the street or at work and daily, in your daily life? Have you ever thought, I'm the, I'm the temple that the Holy Spirit dwells in? You know, that's not much of a thing we consider all the time. But I think we should. Mm -hmm. All the more as the times that we see here. I mean, these people need God's Spirit in their lives. Amen. I have never seen a more delusional people in my life. I have often attributed to a, a, an insanity that's going around the nation. Of all these crazy things that some of the other preachers mentioned this morning, I don't want to rehash them, but uh, they're just need such great help from the Lord to get away from such foolishness right. to come back to actually come back to reality and then Amen. maybe we could talk to you. Amen. We gotta get them back this far before we can, you know, we need God to come and help us to get these people back. You know, if you if you gather a bunch of them together you can't get a straight answer out of any of them. <laughs> Nobody knows what they're doing, why they're doing it, what for, what, right. what's the thing, of, what's this all about? Is this the way that we're supposed to be? You won't find that. It's, it's crazy. Yep. They don't have an answer. Like we got protesters, they had protesters marching the other day. This woman hold up a map, you know, free Hamas from uh, a river to sea, and they, uh, the fellow asked her, what river and what sea? She says, well, I don't know. 
<laughs> but she got the, she made up this big old poster board, you know, and she's been carrying it all around, and she's just protesting, but she doesn't know what's for. <laughs> and I think, you know, her own poster. <laughs> <laughs> now let's get back to reality where things right. actually mean something. Amen. Something where something has a value to it. Mm -hmm. And that's what God teaches in His Word and His Holy Spirit exemplifies that to us. And what's God here for anyway? He's here. This book is for our good. Yeah, you're right. It's yeah. for us mm -hmm. to be to help us yeah, get right. close to God. That Spirit's here to help and guide us and lead us. Help us get back to where we should be. Amen. Amen. All these people need this. Not just Joe Dose and all of you here. All these people need this. Now I know, I understand, we are probably in the last days, it's just so, and, and things are coming about rapidly. But I, I just have a feeling in my heart that God's not saying, listen, it's time we retreat. Everybody get in your house and, and, and shut the doors and close the windows. Close everything up. Sit there and read your Bible. I don't think that's what God wants. No way. The message has not changed. Go ye into the world. Right? right? Amen. Teaching and preaching. Helping them deserve all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even in the end of the world. That's what God wants of us. He wants us to have that same drive that maybe we one time had. I remember a sermon about, uh, oh, this was that fellow from the Philippines, Ildi Dillaran. He said, uh, oh, it was about the fallow ground. And uh, I thought it to be an interesting sermon because I never knew what fallow ground was because I was no farmer. <laughs> you know, it was to uh, break, break open again the ground that you had let rest that it needed rest, so you use it again. Mm -hmm. And so I'd say this morning, uh, or this afternoon to all of us, let's, uh, let's ask the Holy Spirit to break up our fallow ground that we might go out and have a good work today. Amen. And tomorrow, Amen. and the next day, and the next Amen. day, Amen. that we might consider the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. dwelling in us, and, and get out there and share Him as we should. Amen. Wouldn't it be wonderful? We need to do that, church. We need to let this Spirit have reign of, of what it can use in us to glorify God. We really do need that. Now, the Spirit, guess what it says here, John 6, 63, it is the Spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are Spirit and they are life. Again, another unseen article. Can't touch it, can't squeeze it, can't see it. An eternal decree. Right? This, this word is so precious and the Spirit will take it where it needs to go. Yep. Now, the bad news is this. That you can actually offend the Spirit. <laughs> and, and I found this out that, you know, I haven't known this for a while, but, and I've always often wondered why it is the way it is. Now, I thought if I cursed God, that that would be the worst thing I could do, or blasphemed against God, you know. But he says, "Man," and then I said, "Well, maybe. How about if I blaspheme against Jesus?" Mm -mm. But I'll tell you what: when you blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, it's a sword that doesn't go away. Right. It is an eternal problem, and. Uh, I don't know if any of these people out there in the, the woke community or any of this have, have committed this sin yet. Although I would say some of them people out there have, have had a good opportunity and uh, may have been riled up enough to do, commit such things. <clears throat> but so far it doesn't seem like they're willing to risk that. They want to fight us on a different battleground of what's acceptable, mm. right? Mm -hmm. they, they want to say, this is acceptable. This is okay. This is, this is the way it should be. This is normal. Not according to God's word, it's not. But this blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, it's not forgiven at any time. The other problem we have, how much time do we have? 
Am I at minute two? Yeah. When we look at this, uh, grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby you're sealed on the day of redemption. <clears throat> the grieving of the Spirit is something that's easy to do. Mm -hmm. You know how easy that is? God will say, Joe, I haven't heard from you. I'll say, okay. No, no speaking. <laughs> that happens. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, be going down the road and driving around. And you know, I, I really like to talk to God when I'm driving around. Yeah. And, <laughs> it's almost like He drives and I talk, you know. <laughs> but I haven't gotten any accidents, so. Uh, they have not put up uh, anything from the police yet. You know, you're not allowed to be on your phone or texting while you're driving. But I guess praying is okay because God seems to take you through. Now, I don't mean look down and don't watch the road, <laughs> but talk to God as you're driving and stuff. And I find that that's very comforting. Yes. And then I'll be going down the road and I'll get that little, you home, Joe? You know, and I'll, I'll be thinking about why I'm, what I can get angry at next or something, or, you know, something fruitless in my life. And then finally down the road, I'll have to humble myself and say, I better say something to the Lord because he's already been knocking. And, and it's, it's okay. Uh, as long as you follow through with what, if you get uh, an unction to do something, well, you ought to take care of it. To grieve not the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And uh, to talk to somebody about the Lord. You know, that's, that's hard to do sometimes with strangers and stuff. And uh, the thing that I honestly admire the most about, like uh, I talked to Hill James quite a bit, and uh, Deacon David, and, and the older folks who just, they just walk up to somebody, and I have a brother-in-law that every, he doesn't, he knows every hillbilly in Ohio. <laughs> he does, personally. I, I, I kid you not, every time he sees somebody, he'll stop and talk to them and, you know, yeah, I'm from so-and-so over here in this county and that, and they'll talk and talk and talk, and, but I wasn't raised that way. So it's kind of foreign for me. But to talk to people about the Lord is getting better and better for me. Amen. And I'm thankful for that, that, you know, it takes putting yourself out into that uncomfortable place, risk being offended, risk being persecuted, and say, here am I, Lord, send me, I'll go. I will actually do that which you want me to do. And that's, that's the way you get away from grieving, that Holy Spirit. And that is one of the best things you can do. Now, I know we're not, what are the, what's that church that they all jump around, Pentecostal? Mm -hmm. Right? I don't mind a little Pentecostal thing from now and then, here and there. I don't care if we all jump up and say, I love God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And we just celebrate and say, thank you, Lord, for saving me. I am so thankful that I'm your child. I don't mind that a bit. Right. But we can't do it all the time. <laughs> we wear ourselves out. Hmm. Right? And I think the Scripture teaches moderation in all things. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And uh, at times, you know, if you, you climb too high, you fall too far. Mm -hmm. And then you have to work your way up. So if we kind of stay kind of in the middle. And uh, I've heard a lot of people say that a lot of times they've walked into our churches and said, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking for a church, but I don't know about your church. It seems kind of dead. <laughs> have you ever heard that? Mm -hmm. I want to ask all of us. Where is our Holy Spirit when somebody looks at us like that and says that? That's right. Mm -hmm. Right? Should we not be... I, I've heard it preached. I can't tell you how many times. We should be the happiest people on this planet. Amen. Amen. Without a doubt, big smiles. Hi, brother. Hi, sister. Hello, everybody. My brothers and sisters in Christ, so good to see every one of you. That's the way we ought to be. Right. Now, I'll tell you this, it takes a little effort. Yes. We have to do those things. You know, the people out there that are running around in all these little sinful groups, they're all looking to connect with somebody, to be a part of something. Yep. 
-hmm. even though it's illicit and immoral, yep. even an abomination at times, they're all looking to be a part of something. Why not help them be part of something blessed, holy, Amen. wonderful? The love of God in their life for peace and safety of their souls, we can give them the best thing they ever found in their life. That's true. If we can just get away from ourselves and let the Spirit lead us. Amen. Mm. We can do those things. We can do those things. Matt gave another scripture that says, quench not the Spirit. Which is when everything's happy, don't you run off and say, well, they're all in there celebrating, I'm going to sneak off. No. Find your, get yourself in there. Get into the joy of what people are celebrating about God. Be happy in it. Take part in it. Now, the one scripture <laughs> Brother Aaron read was, <laughs> Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of spirits out there. there is. Mm -hmm. Now, the ones that you want to get close to are the ones that say, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. Yeah, that's true. That's right. In that, you have safety. But all these others, be mindful of. Remember, those that are with us are not against us. Mm -hmm. There's still a lot of things that are different from here and there. Um, I know things are, a lot of things are changing in a lot of different churches. And I honestly believe, I, I blame it on the changing of the, of the word. Too many too many churches going away from King James. Amen. And, and it's a slow process. They change a word, take out a word, move this around, move that around. And the next thing you know, there's no inspiration in the book anymore. That's true. And did you know uh, they have to change, uh, in order to get a copyright, you have to change, I don't know, 40% uh, of the text or something around. It, can, it has to be a certain percentage different before you can get a copyright. Uh, if you don't get a copyright, you can't get any money. So when you change, when you want to uh, correct God's word, and I say that correct, when you want to go ahead and try to correct God's word and make it better, so people can understand it, you're not helping yourself any, <laughs> and let alone the people that you're trying to help. You can just leave this book. Just like it is. Amen. Amen. Just leave it like this and you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. The these and thous and yees and all that stuff will take care of itself. Mm -hmm. uh, you know one thing I remember about what they said about how this book is, is uh, the Holy Spirit takes this book to somebody that has a sixth grade reading level. Yes. You know, when they tested this book, the Bible, it was at a sixth grade reading level. Yes. Now that was back, I think, I don't know, 60s, 70s, 80s, or somewhere in there. But since then, the reading level of college students is probably dipping below that. <laughs> <laughs> and we got a problem with this. We do. If I, I've watched some little Facebook snippets of people doing interviews at colleges and people asking questions that, that we learned in the first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade. And they were common, common questions. And these people who are in their first, second, third year of college could not answer them. Yeah. And I am thinking our education system is tanking. Mm -hmm. I can remember the reading, writing, arithmetic, right. not all these perverted things that they're trying to bring into school. Reading, writing, arithmetic. You know, the things that, uh, uh, that are necessary you know, the, the basic, the good reason for schooling was to do what? Learn how to read to read this book. Yeah. <laughs> Learn how to read to read the Bible. Amen. That's what we need schooling for. Counting. All the education. All the things so we can get hold of uh, and, and get God's spirit inside of us to do things that would be pleasing to God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Remember, we're just the clay. Right? We're not the, the potter. Amen. We're just the clay. And we have to keep that in our mind about not overrunning things. And one of the last things I wanted to talk about was this, that uh, over in Revelation 22, the Spirit, you know, as we get to the close of the Bible and things are winding up, and uh, you go through Revelation and 
my goodness, times are, I, I don't know, I've often thought I would like to be here, but now I'm even changing my mind. <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe I don't want to be here <laughs> when we get close, because things are going to get bad. Mm -hmm. But I remember that God always had the, when, when all those plagues, when God brought all the plagues into Egypt by, the, by His power and the Holy Spirit, He brought up the Spirit brought all the plagues in there, and they, then people in Egypt suffered and suffered and suffered. The children of Israel down in the land of Goshen was just as happy as could be. Protected by God. Mm -hmm. And I hope that's the way it'll be uh, towards the end here. Revelation 22, 17. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Mm -hmm. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. The Spirit wants us. And, and here's the last instruction. The Spirit and the Bride. That's the will of God. <coughs> the will of God in us. Having that same, agreeing with that will. And testifying to the unsaved that they need salvation. Yes. That's our work. That's our job. We need to do this work. Now, 2 Timothy says, 7, 2 Timothy 1 7, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear. Which is what I think sometimes I, 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 I put that in myself whenever I'm challenged by the spirit to go and do a task. Oh, I can't do that. I can't say that. I can't approach that person. Or I can't speak to them. Or I don't want to do this or that. But it says, the spirit that's in me is not of that nature. That's me saying that. Yes. The spirit that is in me is this way. It says, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. Mm -hmm. Power. I should use that power that God put in me to be able to do this work. But I have to convince myself and agree and, and try to say, Lord, give me strength to do thy will. I don't pray that prayer much. But I should. That should be every day, shouldn't it? He says, of power and of love and a sound mind. I can't think of a better, uh, a better stand in this world to have than have power, love, and a sound mind. Now, remember, I'm talking about all these crazy people out here. That's being a sound mind. Having love and having the power. We have, actually right now, we our toolbox is full. Mm -hmm. It's complete. Right. Amen. The Holy Spirit will tell us how to get, what tool to get out, and how to use it. If we'll just obey that Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. We can do this work. Now for a long time we've gotten a little bit lazy, I think. I know I have. I'll admit it to you. Uh, the, the, the things that are happening just bog you down so much. That's not an excuse. Hmm. Yeah. That's, 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 that's just quenching the Spirit, right? Grieving the Spirit. So we need to do better in this day and age. If we expect things to, to get better for our communities, our country, and the people around us, we have to do that. Uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> It said, if you want to have a lot of friends, what are you supposed to do? Show yourself friendly. Show yourself friendly. If you want to have a lot of saved people around you, what do you got to do? Show them salvation, right? Amen. Right? Amen. Works the same, doesn't it? And of course, we have everything we need. Now, the one thing I wanted to tell you about this is, you can see how God is. Uh, God the Father, God the Son, and then God the Holy Spirit Again, kind of into man's hands, into man's hearts, and in, in, in close proximity that we can use it. You know what this system is? I'm going to say it this way. Now, it's foolproof. Mm -hmm. Now, take the definition of a fool. Foolproof. Right? God has set this up. It'll work if we'll use it.
and we just have to use it. We have to set this in motion in our lives every day, all the time. And that first thing we need is not to quench that spirit and not to bless or uh, not to uh, grieve that Holy Spirit or quench it, but to use it in our lives every day. Take advantage of it. Grow. You know, uh, it's nice to be off the milk and it's nice to be on the meat, but if you don't use it and you don't you don't use uh, you don't need that meat to grow any more spiritual muscle, you get a little fat. <laughs> You know, just like natural things. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you consume, why, wow, Lord, that was a good meal. I really enjoyed the sermons of the day and everything's great. Now I'm going to go home and lay down and do nothing. <laughs> well, you can get spiritually fat too. Mm -hmm. We need to exercise what God has given us that we might, and He's given us the power to do it, right, with the Holy Spirit. I mean, the Holy Spirit's a go-getter. It, it wants... It, God desires success. He wants us to do these things. And church, I say that we should, it's high time that we go about the master's business and get things done in a better way. And that's personally. We, it all starts with us first. Get ourselves shaped up and ready to go to work. Right? Mm -hmm. Then we go out there and we, you can go a little bit at a time too. I mean, you don't have to jump off the deep end and run down there and go to a, one of them parades and start you know, talking to them people, uh, they don't like you very much. You better be a strong person to approach them. But from time to time, you'll be able to convince somebody that they need Jesus. Amen. They need Him badly. Their life will change immensely. Uh, I've got one little story to tell you about how the power of the Holy Spirit and Jesus a deacon David on our way down we stopped at Cracker Barrel and Mineral Wells and our, our, our waitress, mm -hmm. she's super, I think it was Melissa, right. real nice to us, gives us everything we wanted, you know, and this and that, and couldn't make up our minds because we can't think of what we want anyway most of the time. <laughs> so, but we got our order and stuff and everything. And, and long about through, the, we're just about getting ready to go, and she says, I'm a recovering addict. Amen. Now she told us that. Amen. And, uh, we ask her, well, how, how did you beat it? She says, Jesus. Amen. 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 And I, I said to her, I understand that because that's the only way that you can truly cure this, the ills of this life Amen. is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. And uh, we were so thankful. And we, we, we told her, bless your sister, we'll, we'll see you again. Even though, you know, we, we may never be stop on her shift again. But it was so good to hear that, listen, God's Word, God's Savior, God's Holy Spirit is still working today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that woman had a lot. I can imagine she was hooked on drugs. Mm -hmm. You know, not she was an addict. And she talked to us as right as rain, and she said she loves to go fishing now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> we were so thankful that we got to talk to that woman. Uh, we were, you know, we spent, uh, I don't know, we were sitting in that car, but it seemed like we were floating all the way the rest of the way down yeah. here because of talking to her about those things. Yes, that's the kind of joy we can bring into a life if we share Jesus with someone. But if we keep Him for ourselves, if we don't say anything. How was that old, old saying? The way to hell and that second death is paved with good intentions. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Right? Boy, I should go do that. I ought to do this. I ought to do that. And never do it. Well, that's not very fruitful, is it? As a matter of fact, you're not, I don't even think you're getting out a little bud there. But we need to be more fruitful. We need to let our light shine. God will keep us in the right path. God will direct us what's right and wrong and, and make sure everything's fine. We just need to do for Him. Brother Moderator. Oh, big step. <laughs>